There you go, Rob. That's what we're dealing with. As you can see in this car, it's uh, had a real serious life beforehand it came to us. It's had a lot of work, previous repairs, and a lot of damage on this car. Um, we're now in the process of putting it on a jig and measuring it up, making sure everything's square so that we can work our way through the car and uh, check the alignment of all the panels, how it's going to fit, what panels need replacing. Um, and as you can see on this rear quarter, uh, the repairs it's had in the past and how much filler was on this car is unbelievable. It's surprising the car was still actually, up until recently, driving around the roads in Europe, around the Swiss Alps, and uh, it's amazing that it stayed together in one piece, really. As you can see from the back end of the car, um, we've got it lined up on a Carolina jigging system. We've adapted the measurements so that we can uh, measure the car underneath so that when we repair and replace any of the panels, we can locate them back into the original places. As you can see, we've just squared the car up on the jig, brought our pointers up to unique places underneath the car so that when we replace these panels, they'll slot back into the original place and be at the same measurement they were before. As we were talking about before, about measuring the car and making sure the panels go back into the original places, as you can see, uh, Rob has manufactured and replaced the chassis leg on the rear of the car here. And you can tell it's been put back into the original place by using the measuring system to make sure it's located exactly the same as it was. As with a lot of uh, classic cars, some of the panels were not readily available. So uh, here we've had to re-manufacture the whole rear quarter panel so that we can replace the damaged quarter panel and the poorly repaired quarter panel that was on the car originally. This we've made in, a, in two pieces on the English wheel and then welded them together and panel finished them. These will be eventually welded into the rear squab of the car and made to look as it was originally. As you can see from the inside of the car, it's very uh, well rotten in a lot of places and has had some really, really bad repairs over the years. The ins entire inside of the car on the rear inner arches have, uh, were all covered in filler, so you couldn't tell how bad it was until you started stripping the paint away and, and, and discovering all the rust and repairs it's had in its life. We're in the uh, process of cutting out part of the floor section and the reinforcer that goes right away across the back of the car, and we'll be uh, remanufacturing that in-house, as you cannot get these panels uh, from an aftermarket source anywhere. So this will take a few, uh, few days of uh, patterning up, uh, using paper to get the shapes you want, then transferring it to steel, and then we'll be able to manufacture them and replace the car to make it as original. The doors are in a very poor state as well. They've been repaired along the bottom section of the door before and just filled over the top. This again, you couldn't tell until you started stripping the paint off. Unfortunately, on these cars, the door skins aren't available either, so we're going to have to manufacture and replace the door skins ourselves. And also, the underside of the doors, they're very, very rotten as well, so we'll probably have to repair most of the door frame as well before we replace the skin. This has had a lot of uh, repairs in its time as well. A lot of damage repairs, a lot of rust repairs. You can buy these wings, but it's actually, we're not going to replace the entire wing. We're probably going to section the wing up to the top central section and replace the bits that are actually damaged, just so we don't need to disturb too much of the car. Um, this is uh, the start of a section of the wing for the other side. You can see we wheeled it uh, in the English wheel, edged it to the door pillar, and then started use, doing the uh, backward curve to mimic the flare that's around the wheel arch. Fortunately with this car, you can get new seals and new floor pans. So the majority of the lower section of the car will be replaced and there'll be new panels put in board. This will let the car survive for the entire rest of its life, I would imagine it should be uh, totally sorted and uh, not need any further work done to it in the future. A couple of small tips really for when you're buying a, a second-hand car or a classic car that's on the market. A few things you can look out for. 
check the door gaps, check the radiuses around the edges of the panel. Um, if they've got a very radius edge and are not a sharp edge, sometimes this can be the amount of paint that's been put on the car, the buildup of paint over time, it radiuses the, the seam and uh, gives away the fact that it's had a lot of paint in its life. Also, um, a small magnet can help you out a lot. If you walk around a car and some pieces look a little bit suspect to you, a little tiny bit of a magnet inside a cloth, touch it on the panel. If it doesn't stick, that means that there's no metal to be found or the metal is a long way away from the surface of the paint. There are a lot more accurate things that you can use these days like digital uh, devices that can tell you how many thicknesses or layers of paint that it's got on the car, but a magnet can give you a very good indication of how much paint is on the car. Also, one thing to do is uh, stay away from late night eBay purchases after a couple glasses of wine. Sometimes you can think with your heart, not your head, and think this will be a good idea. And then before you know it, you've got a hundred thousand pound anchor around your neck thinking, why did I have that extra glass of wine? <laughs> this has been Daz at PK Thornton Restoration. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe and look out for our future videos. Thank you.